No beast of burden was allowed on the Van Diemen's land settlement. All the pulling and dragging was done by human beings. About a hundred good conduct men were allowed the lighter toil of dragging timber to the wharf to assist in shipbuilding. Others cut down the trees that fringe the water's edge. The denseness of scrub and bush rendered it necessary for a roadway, perhaps a quarter of a mile in length, first to be constructed. And the trunks of the trees, stripped of their branches, were rolled together in this roadway until a slide was made down which the heavier logs could be shunted towards the harbour. According to author Marcus Clark, the convicts of Van Diemen's Land found work in the forest soul-destroying labour, to the early settlers the forest was a nuisance. over the years has completely reversed this view and shown that the forests of Tasmania are among its greatest assets. Today the forest is the story of management and conservation, of man and his environment. 43% of Tasmania's total area is forested, a unique endowment by a bountiful nature. The great forests spread in tiered folds, on one hand, protecting and shielding the land from the frost-lipped winter spawned in the Antarctic, and on the other, providing a cool retreat from the heat of summer. In these forest depths may be found a variety of fine timbers. Myrtle and blackwood, which are among the world's finest furniture timbers. Hewn pine much sought after by boat builders. Tasmanian oak, supreme for building purposes. And in the Styx Valley, the world's tallest hardwood, a swamp gum which towers 99 meters. These varieties and many others abound in Tasmania's prime forests. 
In the pioneering days, the bush seemed limitless, and the question of conserving forest resources did not arise. Sawmills quickly flourished, not only supplying the local timber needs of the developing colony, but later setting up a traditional export trade with the less fortunate states of mainland Australia. For the domestic and export market, only the best timber was taken, leaving the forest with an increasing proportion of low-quality trees. The first attempt at forest management was made in 1920, when a state department of forestry was set up, later to become a commission in 1946. Today, this commission employs about 50 professional foresters and engineers and more than 120 technical officers. It became apparent that pure saw milling on its own was a wasteful operation due to a selective market, high export freight costs and an inability to use small sized or low quality logs. It was obvious that to get the best returns from the forests, some diversification was needed. As early as 1937, Associated Pulp and Paper Mills started operation of a mill at Burnie in the northwest to produce high-grade paper from native eucalypt timbers. In 1941, Australian newsprint mills commenced operations at Boyer, about 30 kilometres from Hobart. This mill now supplies half Australia's newsprint needs from the traditional gum tree. Later, Tasmanian plywood mills at Somerset in the northwest set up a plant to produce veneers and plywood from high quality logs. Australian newsprint mills at Boyer harvest 1,200 tonnes of swamp gum, stringy bark and gum top logs daily. These come from the paper forest concession of 182,000 hectares in the Styx and Florentine valleys of southern Tasmania.
Although these projects were steps in the right direction and were major export items, they were not enough. The Forestry Commission had by now embarked on a more intensive management program of surveys, aerial photography and the mapping and field measurement of forest crops. This showed that without doubt the forests could be used even more effectively and that the harvesting of all forest products must be integrated. It focused attention on large areas of decadent, lower quality forests and Tasmania saw the birth of export wood chip production. For the foresters, this was a major breakthrough. By simultaneous and integrated harvesting of both pulpwood and saw logs, they are now able to fully use these poorer trees and replace them with vigorous new forests. When all usable logs have been recovered from each cutting area, the remaining logging debris is allowed to dry out and is then burnt in the autumn. This very hot controlled burn provides an excellent ash bed for the germination and early growth of eucalyptus seedlings. The seed for such regeneration sometimes falls naturally from standing seed trees, but usually is sown from specially equipped aircraft. this type of forest practice on an economic basis, wood chip production provides a major export to Japan, earning more than 30 million dollars annually for Tasmania. Tasmanian Pulp and Forest Holdings Limited, based on the east coast port Triabunna, exports 600,000 tons of wood chips annually by a shuttle service using two specially designed Japanese bulk carriers, each of which ferries 35,000 tons. In the north, Associated Pulp and Paper Mills Limited and Northern Wood Chips Proprietary Limited both have chipping plants at long reach with a combined target total of 1,600,000 tonnes a year. However, such a large timber harvest requires specialised care in operation, planning and control with particular attention to the regeneration, protection and development of the forests. Despite the increase in sawmilling timber made available by pulpwood operations, this only partly solves the expected shortage of saw logs during the next two or three decades, while regrowth from early forest cutting matures. To meet this lean period for both Tasmania and Australia, the Forestry Commission and some private companies are establishing large plantations of fast-growing, highly productive pines in selected areas. Seed is collected from prime quality trees, plants are raised in forest nurseries and planted out to provide milling timber, flake board and long fibred pulp for paper making. New and improved strains come from special tree breeding. Hand in hand with planning and research, Good forest husbandry includes day-to-day -day practical management and development. The Commission has built and maintains about 3,000 kilometres of forest roads. This road network is continually pushed deeper into the forest areas 
in anticipation of future production. The Commission has a vigilant fire control service with dams, fire breaks, communications, fire towers and firefighting equipment. Tasmanian forests, however, are not just a crop to be harvested for purely commercial interests. Recreation areas are available for people to enjoy. Good forest management is true conservation in action. Future generations of Tasmanians can grow up with a heritage of grass, water and trees instead of the rank vegetation of the concrete forest. Yeah,